Hello, everyone. This is Ed K. Smith, the co-host of The Asset Show, here with Rob K., the other co-host of The Asset Show. Hey, Rob. G'day, mate. Good to see you, mate. Been a long time. Yes, and uh, <laughs> we have a very special guest on the show today, all the way from the Netherlands. So we're doing a special out of our normal time recording. We have Dominic Carosa, who is the founder and chairman of... Banksa.com. How are you, mate? Yeah, fantastic, uh, Ed and Rob. Uh, thanks for having me and thanks for staying up late for this uh, interview. It's not too late for us, mate, because we're in Perth, so it's only it's only seven o'clock, but, um, you know, so we, we'll probably be, be up a bit later still. But uh, so hard to believe, Dominic, you and I did a podcast 10 years ago, almost to the month, uh, talking about domain names on my old podcast, Oz Domainer. Wow. And I looked at I looked that up when when all this came about about what we're going to talk about with the uh, with the domains we'll mention in a second. I'm kind of a couple of ten years have gone past that freaking fast. So um we haven't aged a bit, mate. We haven't aged a single day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for those who um, are hearing this for the, for the first time, we're going to deep dive into some very exciting sales of some domain names, uh, some .com.au domains, uh, block, sorry, not blockchain, bitcoin.com.au, uh, buyabitcoin.com.au and coinloft.com.au. Uh, recent sales uh, that happened from Banksa uh, for 3 million Australian dollars approximately or 2 million US. So hold that thought. We're going to get into the weeds on that once we get a bit of a backstory about this amazing guy called Dominic and find out how all of this happened, how do all of this lead up to uh, the, the founding of Bankers. Because I know if you look on uh, the LinkedIn profile of Dominic, uh, it's about 17 miles long. He's got a history of a, a lot of amazing businesses and still runs a lot of them as well. But it's, um, it's, a, it's a very, very interesting story. So so Dom, let's go back. Do you, do you mind if we call you Dom? Do you prefer Dom or Dominic? Dom's good. Dom's, Dom's good. good. It's shorter. So, so, so Dom. Before before we jump into Don, do you mind if I butt in? Go. Remember, it was yesterday morning, and sorry we haven't let you speak yet, Dom, but um, it, it's very exciting, right? Yesterday morning, I, I wake up, and I've got like seven WhatsApp messages, and they're all from domain investors going. I think the biggest .com.au sale in history has just happened because it's getting reported everywhere. And I'm like, what? I'm brushing my teeth trying to get to the computer to find <laughs> out what's going on. And then I'm texting Ed going, Ed, I think the biggest .com.au domain sale ever has happened. We need to find out more about it. And Ed's going, oh, I, I've interviewed Dominic about 10 years ago. We should, And anyway, here we are. So I'm just very excited that for doing this podcast and finding out um, about the sales of these three domain names. So carry on. Very, very cool. Very cool. So, so Dom, a bit of a backstory. So what, uh, what led you up to the process of being in, in this space, of, of, uh, in, in, in the digital space? Because um, you've had a lot of different companies leading up to Banksa. So a bit of a, a brief history of the last, say, you know, 10 years leading up to where you are now. What, what was it you were doing that got you involved in this whole, whole space? And then yeah. we'll talk about what Banksa is. So certainly. Um, I mean, personally, I've been uh, involved in tech since mid-90s. Uh, I guess I'm a bit of a nerd uh, going back that sort of li likes to try and combine business and, uh, and tech. And, uh, and I've always kind of been a domainer and, like, at the heart, I always love generic domain names. It's just for me, it's kind of um, anything other than a generic really won't do. And uh, and we can sort of talk about you know how, how I actually managed to acquire the Bitcoin domain name and and a number of others yep. uh, in the space. But uh, you know, I've been involved in tech. Uh, listed my first company in two thousand uh, on the Australian Stock Exchange, which I ran for eight years, and then ran an early stage venture capital fund. Uh, investing into SaaS companies that was called Future Capital. Uh, mm -hmm. Fell down the crypto rabbit hole in 2013. Uh, I was really quite fascinated by the the technology, um, obviously the Satoshi white paper uh, as well. 
And for me, the, the way that I kind of looked at Bitcoin and, and the other uh, coins, not a lot of the, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say shit coins, but there's a lot of shit coins out there. But yeah, let's call Go it, for it. The, the, the top <laughs> echelon uh, of coins out there um, is really, they're like software companies, really at the heart, Bitcoin and Ethereum is like investing into a software company like Microsoft or Oracle, but it just happens to be decentralized, not controlled by anyone, uh, yeah. and uh, and basically peer to peer. And for me, when I saw that, I kind of fell in love with that as from a technology perspective. And then taking a step back, really understanding all the potential use cases. Um, and I'm sure we've heard the term "be your own bank." Um, for me, that's obviously been a, a very important. Um, reason why I've, I've in this particular space and so fell in the crypto hole in 2013 um, the first kind of push into that um, sector was mining um, actually started mm -hmm. mining that was kind of like um, bought my first mining kit in the end of 2013 um, we ha had an office in Melbourne um, basically an office full actually a couple offices full of mining kit and that's kind of how we got started and and kind of the the story goes that we started there. Um, some of you that have been around in the crypto space for a while may remember Mt. Gox. So we were yeah. mining Bitcoin. And then where you know the electricity <clears throat> provider, the staff, they all needed to get paid in cash because at that point, no one really wanted to accept Bitcoin. And so we used to have to send them to Mt. Gox. And you know how unreliable Mt. Gox was and it yeah. eventually went bust. Um, and I think I still got some coins sitting at Mt. Gox somewhere. Uh, <laughs> and... and uh, and then we sort of thought, hey, maybe that we can actually just sell these coins that we're mining. And that's how we launched um, sort of mid-2014 by bitcoin.com.au. Right. Uh, and there came a certain tipping point whereby we were selling more coins to consumers out there than we were mining. And then we thought, actually, mining is very CapEx intensive. We're doing it in Australia where electricity is very, very expensive. Because, yeah. you know, the big miners are kind of doing it at two, three, four cents kilowatt. We were paying 10 to 12 cents per kilowatt. Um, and I think we can make a business out of this. It's a kind of like, you know, think of the FX broker, but moving into the crypto space. And that was really the, the genesis of, of Banksa. Um, and then shortly thereafter, and we can sort of get into the detail, acquired mm -hmm. bitcoin.com.au domain name. Um, so we've rebranded by Bitcoin to bitcoin.com.au. And I can mm -hmm. tell, you know, tell you the reasons why I thought that was, you know, really important to do. And then, you know, a couple of the problems that we were solving at Banksa was around the payment side, the regulation side. Yeah. And then we did that in Australia. Obviously, we were one of, the, one of the first companies to get Austrac registered. And then we looked back and thought, there's actually a much bigger global problem to solve. Um, Australia's kind of gone a step in terms of solving it. But the same thing needs to happen in all other places around the world. And so we pivoted our business, um, rebranded at Banksa and focused on providing payments and reg tech solutions to the crypto industry on a global basis. Uh, and, uh, and then we ended up listing Banksa in January 2021 on the Toronto Stock Exchange. And that's another story of why wow. Toronto as opposed to the ASX. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, earlier this week, we sold... Um, you know, Bitcoin and a couple of other domain names, but it's safe to say that the Bitcoin domain name is the one that is, you know, that's the prize, that's the jewel uh, yeah. in, uh, in those sort of three uh, domain portfolio. And for me, the reason why, and, and I think we can talk about you know, how I actually, I actually bought it on the drop, would you believe? Um, and, Did you? Uh, <laughs> okay, this is getting better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, and, I, and I bought, a, I mean, I, I own a bunch of domain, you know, not only AUs, but a whole bunch of dot coms and others, because I just love premium, uh, premium domain names. Uh, so, so maybe I'll kind of leave it at there, and, and I'm sure you've got some other questions. We've got questions now. <laughs> um, in 2013, you were mining Bitcoin, which is, as we all know now, is incredibly early to even understand that you should be doing that at that time. Can we? Can you basically remember what you were? And then, you, then you made buybitcoin.com.au. Do you know what you were selling them for at that time, roughly? Oh, I, I think it was like like a couple of hundred bucks. I think it hit a high of a thousand dollars, yeah, thereabouts. Okay. So it was wow. it was kind of very very early in the whole evolution of um, of the ecosystem. Yeah, 
And uh, I mean, I can't remember where it went in 2015. I mean, the, the Bitcoin price, everyone knows it just, it's up and down yeah. uh, like a yo-yo, but the general trend is up. And putting yeah. aside the price, I'm a believer in the technology and what it can achieve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that that's why I'm in the space. So I kind of, to a degree, ignore the price. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's certainly been a, um, a bit of a journey. Yeah. Wow. Do you still, do you guys still mine today? No, no, we, we basically sold our, the rest of the mining kit in 2014, when we worked out there's actually more money around the whole selling of the coins. So we yeah. would acquire yeah. them from third parties. We would sell them because back then it was really, really difficult to do. Um, there was, it was a bit of the wild west. And in fact, we were, we were sort of one of the founding members of the, um, the digital asset association, I think it was called back then, um, helped lobby the government for regulation. And then Austrack kind of, I think, you know, really did the right thing and helped create uh, a kind of semi-licensing type regime. It's technically called a registration where you need to do AML, KYC, uh, you need to do, you know, yeah. checks and reporting for suspicious transactions and all of that kind of stuff that a, a sort of financial company does. And that's just really part of the evolution of the industry and and the evolution of uh, of banks are, mm. uh, and and so a number of years ago, you know, we, I mean, the Bitcoin.com.au website's still running today; it's still selling Bitcoin. But we kind of took our our foot off the accelerator purely because we went from just being Australian focused to being very internationally focused. Yeah, uh, and hence you know the the banks are brand is much more global. Um, the t- our team's much more global and we're now listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange with the objective longer term is to list on NASDAQ. Rob and I just came back from the Gold Coast from the Australian Crypto Convention, which was you know quite a big thing. There was four odd thousand people there. And um, the, the, the conversations that we're having with lots of different big companies there, like um, Binance and SwiftX and others, and, and uh, you know, other small players is there needs there needs to be the regulation to keep things under control to bring the rest of the market in, so people can trust that they're not going to get rugged <laughs> every five minutes for their whatever coins they're getting involved with, whatever crypto, whatever uh, product. So, so you, I'm assuming you you're you're good with things being regulated to a certain point. Yeah, I, I think regulation that is fit for purpose is actually good for the industry. Yeah. Um, I think a regulation that goes too far, what it will basically do is just create these dark shadows within the industry that people don't want to uh, you know, effectively pop up their heads. So I, I think, once again, you know, regulation that's fit for purpose and doing AML, KYC and all that kind of stuff, I think that's just, uh, in, in a way, I, I look at that as really being good for the industry because it means the industry is growing up. You know, when we started in 2013, 2014, there was none of that stuff. You wouldn't even think about trying to ask someone for a passport. Uh, no, and, uh, and no. so, yeah. But now, um, AML KYC, unless you're you know buying some Bitcoin from your mate or using something like local Bitcoins, um, you know, AML KYC is an important part of the process. Yeah, and so the, so those for those who don't know, that's the the process of authenticating who you are with your passport and filling in a thousand documents. And a lot of people don't like do it doing it, but once you've done it, you've done it. Uh, and and you're in the system, and that's like I I think I've done it 20 times in the last year and a half or two. <laughs> so so you got to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, Rob, the, the banks and platforms pretty quick. I mean, you can go through yeah. that process in under five minutes. Frankly, all you need is your driver's license or passport, and and pretty much we do all the heavy lifting on the back end just to make it really mm-hmm. simple for for consumers. But anyway, that that's a that's a different story to the domain name domain name story. It, it yeah. is, but. On that, I wouldn't mind finding out more about Banksa for our for our watchers as well. So, so what can people do at, at banksa.com? Yeah, um, so our, our core focus is really B2B. So we work with exchanges like Binance, OKX, Huobi, KuCoin, Edge Wallet, and you know, well over 100 other partners. So we take our payment infrastructure and reg tech infrastructure and plug it into those global exchanges and allow local payment methods in a compliant way. We've got um, what they call VASPs, virtual asset service provider licenses all around the world. Because these days, unlike in you know 2014, you need to have a license in order to be able to operate in the space. Uh, yeah. you know, and, and long gone are the days where you can do things in, in the shadows. And so we've acquired licenses, not only you know, in Australia, um, Canada, in Europe, 
Um, now in the in the UK, um, we've set up an office in the US, the US being the largest crypto market in the world. We've got an office in Nevada. Uh, we're acquiring, uh, in the US, it's a little bit different. Um, it's called, they're called MTLs, money transmitter licenses, and you need to do it on a state by state basis while yeah. in Australia, the Netherlands, Lithuania, UK, it's all done on a country by country basis. Gotcha. Um, and that's really part of, because it's, it's like a patchwork of regulations. Um, that's part of the the pain point that banks are solves for our customers is instead of them trying to do it across a hundred countries, banks are does all of that. And because mm. we've done it once, it's relatively easy for us to do it again and again and again, uh, because it's quite a repeatable process. Okay, interesting. So for mum and dad, mum and dad's in Australia that that want to buy crypto. I mean, they go to places like um, Binance or, or to stay local. They go to BTC Markets or CoinSpot, Independent Reserve. We bought our domain names. Yep. Yeah, Independent yeah. Reserve. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're about to get a lot more uh, <laughs> famous in Australia because they just bought Bitcoin.com.au, right? Yeah, 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 and and, <laughs> so, and 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 just to sort of uh, just to sort of come back on on the story on you know why um, you know how did I acquire it? So we started with buy Bitcoin purely because Bitcoin.com.au wasn't available. Yep. Um, I ended up in, and I'm looking at the invoice right now. <laughs> uh, the 25th of November, 2014, I bought it on the drop on Netfleet. Wow! Wow! Uh, can, can you can you say what you paid for it, or is that top secret? Uh, I, I think it's in the public domain. Um, I think I paid was it sixty grand uh, or thereabouts for the domain. Which back then oh. people were thinking. I, I, I had people approach me afterwards and say, "Well, I had two different uh, types of people. One saying, are you crazy? You just spent like sixty grand plus G, so like let's call it sixty five k to buy yep. this domain name. Like, are you got rocks in your head?" <laughs> and then I had another group, like I had a couple of other people basically offer me 4X for that domain name within 24 hours of acquiring Ooh, it. Oh, yeah. You're already in the yeah. space. And I said, thank you. But the reason I bought the domain name is because we want to build, well, we've got already got a business. We're going to yeah. rebrand our business as bitcoin.com.au. And, and you may ask, well, why? If you look at all the new users coming into the crypto space, you know, if you work on the basis that 10 to 15% of people are crypto savvy, that still leaves the other 85, 90%. The yep. first coin anyone really thinks about and talks about is Bitcoin. Yeah. And so having a domain name that is basically what people are searching for, even if you're sort of, uh, you know, you do your SEO half right, you'll basically get to that to the top of the search. And it is, yeah. um, I, 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 as I told the guys at Independent Reserve, I think even at 3 million bucks, it is an absolute bloody bargain. It is. Um, over the next two to three years, it will pay, you, so it pay itself off many times over. Shit, because yeah. you just get that organic traffic. You know how expensive Google AdWords are? Yes. And that it's organic stuff, yeah. Yeah. it's like free marketing. And if yeah. you do your SEO right, it's like top of all the engines for not only Bitcoin, but buy Bitcoin and every single variation as well. Yeah. So I actually think even at 3 million, it's a bloody bargain. Now, hang on a minute. You're saying... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I know where Rob's going. I bought it for three million. Did you buy? And you don't have to just say whatever you're comfortable with. But are you saying Bitcoin.com.au sold for three million, and all the other stuff was chucked in the bag with it? Uh, I, I'm not sure how it was allocated internally, in three, and how the buyer is going to allocate it internally. Okay. There's obviously a value in the other domain names, but you know, any layperson looking at those three domain names. Yeah, you don't yeah. need to be a genius to work out that Bitcoin.com.au, that is the jewel in the crown. Absolutely. That is, and, that is the 90%. So, <laughs> yeah. And then what 80, about 90, 95, 99? So oh, yeah. there, That's, it said and website assets. So is there was there website technology that went with it, yeah, like yeah. databases and that, that there's there's it, let's let's say it was sold as a going concern. So if you go to bitcoin.com.au, there's a website there, but yeah. ultimately, once again. I, I'm I'm a I'm a domainer at heart, and where I see the real real value is in the domain name. Like for me, you then own yeah, that absolutely. piece of of Bitcoin infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah, it's not in going the away. Marketplace. Yeah, 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 they've, yeah. They've paid because this is I get pretty finicky with this stuff. Like I don't <laughs> know how 
to, and you don't have to even answer this. It's, it's my own problem, but I don't know how to say how much bitcoin.com.au sold for, you know? Like, I guess we can say it sold for 3 million with two other um, kind of weaker names and some website tech. I guess that's it, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty uh, much. I, how, how the buyer allocates it, how we allocate it internally, I'm going to leave that up to the finance teams. Yeah, cool. um, you know, they're smarter than me when it comes to yeah. um, working out the value of each of the assets. But, you know, from a, a domain perspective, um, you know, for me, that's... Yeah. You know, it's that's probably worth and 90. You don't even have to answer. I'm not trying yeah. to trick you into anything here, but it's, it's guess, already like, said <laughs> it's kind of like 95% of the, you know what I mean? Probably. Yeah. 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 It, it's, and, it's one of those, it's one of those things where it's, um, it's the extremely obvious one that is the, the one that people would care about. Um, it's the, the, jewel, the like, one, it's the jewel. It's the one that everyone knows in the public. The other two, yeah, they're fine if they've got them, great. But in terms of the deal, um, it wouldn't have probably made or make or break the deal happening with the other two in it or not. So, um, so that's a that's an amazing. And I think I read there was um, a portion of equity stake in uh, independent reserve as well. Is that right? Okay. Yep. Yep. So I mean, well, we we really like the team at independent reserve. Um, we've we actually agreed to take a portion of the consideration as equity in independent reserve, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not going to talk about you know what yep. their plans are for it because that's that's up to them to talk about. But you know, suffice to yep. say, yep. I'm happy to to basically hitch part of the value onto um, onto what they're doing because once again, I, I really like the team over there, um, yep. and I think their plans for the domain once they unveil it, I think are absolutely super. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's you know a what? smart that's a smart move, man, isn't it, Rob? I mean, that's the sort of thing that Rick Schwartz that's and genius. Dominic would know who yeah. Rick Schwartz is. That's the sort of thing he'd you know, get get some ongoing equity in in the in the deal. Don't just sell a domain. If you know it's going to something where you think there's a lot of upside, why give away all of the upside? And Dom's just proving again why he's a smart cookie. Uh, yeah. because... and, and that's the concept of NFTs on the blockchain too, really. It's like hold a little piece back, right? For, for the artist or the initial creator. Like, and that, that's what you've done. You, let's face it, since 2014, you've babied this awesome bitcoin.com.au brand until now. Like you kind of deserve to hold on to a piece of it as, a, as it builds and takes on its next leg. And I think independent reserve are, are geniuses for buying it. People might say $3 million, but we're in a... We're in a bear market here. Like, imagine the next bull market. What is yeah. worth? <laughs> yeah, add a, add another zero at least in my in my mind. <laughs> uh, I, I think even if the guys held it at independent reserve and sold it in a bull market, they double their money easily. That's easy, yeah. easy, e yeah. e easily. So, so all the all the people who said, "Dom, you're an idiot for buying that sixty five thousand dollar domain name." Where where are they now? They have they come out of the woodwork to say congratulations, mate. That was a that was a great deal. Uh, Never no, saw no, that no, one. No, I'm not expecting. Please. I'm not expecting anything like that. No, um, no, that was and, that was and me the other being thing really done at banks for, as well. Um, is you know, it's obviously because the company is global. Um, where we went around over the last really five six years and yep. tried to acquire some of the other premium domain names. So we yes. own Bitcoin.co.uk. Yeah. Um, .ca for Canada, uh, oh. .co.in for India. Now, that was a, a fairly, when I say recent, in the last kind of two years. Mm -hmm. um, .eu for Europe, and, and there's, there's a couple of others. So I'm, I'm actually, um, you know, from a banks of perspective, very bullish that we're going to be able to, you know, sell the remainder of those particular domain names as well uh, at, you know, at some fairly strong, nice valuations to other people in the group. Because when you think about it, if you are an exchange, if you are one of a number of exchanges in a country, you know, yeah. just say you're in the UK and there's, you know, there's about a dozen different competitors and plus a number of international competitors, you know, how do you differentiate other than, than pricing and volume and your brand name? Um, if you actually own that premium Bitcoin domain name in the UK, for example, yeah. you, know, you can use that as a funnel for all those new people coming on board into the space and funneling yeah. into your exchange. It's it's like a a cost effective marketing channel for all these other exchanges and and uh, and I think you know once again we're talking to some other groups and I'm not going to talk about anything until the deal is done 
Uh, but, Fair enough. You know, suffice to say, I think um, there's you know plenty of opportunity on the basis that Bitcoin is still the mother of all cryptos. And my yep. personal view is, I think it is. I mean, I, I I love Bitcoin. I mean, I also love Ethereum. Don't don't get yeah. me wrong. But yeah. I think Bitcoin is really it's the first. It's the one that I think will still be here in fifty years time. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And Bitcoin and, and Ethereum since the merge have really um, kind of separated in a good way. As as you know, now Bitcoin's proof of work and Ethereum's now proof of stake. So that they're not even really competitors anymore. They kind of offer separate. Well, one one's more of a utility token; the other is a store of value. So I mean, yeah, Bitcoin is store of value and. And and Ethereum is the is the core DeFi platform that everyone's using. Um, I don't see either of them going away anytime soon. The rest are all maybes, could be, possibly, but ninety percent of them are all going to turn to crap anyway. Uh, so why wouldn't you go with that? And you look at something like the .co.uk and you think, well, okay, there's what 70, 60, 70, 80 million people in million the UK. People. Yeah. So you know, it's more than double the size. So at the fact that you've got now on record, hey, we sold the dot com yeah, you. That's the in, new benchmark, man. In little old Australia, you know, <laughs> a little 25 million people. Yeah. Tiny um, Australia paid three mil for bitcoin.com.au. And then as we know as domain investors, whoever gets bitcoin.co.uk, overnight that credibility and authority of that brand is basically for all the the everyday people that get into Bitcoin for the first time, they're going to go to bitcoin.co.uk and see yeah, that as the authority of the people who know about Bitcoin in in England. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, I'll tell you what, a really interesting stat. I'm not going to give you the exact details, but just give you a bit of a cool. flavor. Yeah. Um, there, there's two ways that you can drive people to, to Bitcoin, to the, one of the Bitcoin domain names. Um, it's either type in traffic yep. or you do SEO. Mm -hmm. And what we found was um, a fairly material part of the traffic was type in traffic, people actually typing in bitcoin.co.uk. But the really interesting point is the people who did that, the propensity to actually complete a purchase to actually buy Bitcoin was extremely high, it was about 4x from SEO. Wow. So that, that just kind of like overnight, anyone who's kind of a domainer and looking at that and just yes. thinking, you know, should I buy it? Should I not buy it? You, you think about that, that direct type in traffic. Yep. Um, so that There's way you're, you're bypassing Google. Oh. That is absolutely gold. Don't yeah. get me started, man. Don't get me started. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a rabbit hole I'm in constantly. And, and another thing that people... <laughs> talk about is using if you're going to be paying for advertising and i've done this because i've been in, in the the adwords game for 20 years you you set up an ad you compare all everything else the same and you have one ad that says bitcoin.com.au in it and the other one that says joe's coin store.com.au what are they going to click on what's going to get the best quality traffic it's we a no-brainer the new owners of bitcoin.com.au can literally just put billboards on buses and you know at train Instant. stops literally just with bitcoin.com nothing else you don't have to have a picture you don't need to have any words and then in the bet in the bull market people are on their phones are just going to go yeah yeah right and just type it in <laughs> mate it's, yep. it's it's an it's a no-brainer what else is there to say See, the thing is, obviously, to us three here, it's it's, it's so freaking obvious and has been for many, many years of what we've just been talking about. But there are still CEOs and 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 heads of companies who are sitting in boardrooms and Rob, deal, Rob and I deal with them at DBR with the domain brokerage on a daily basis who just still right over their heads, clueless, don't get it. 35 years after the internet's been around, domain names, they just... It's it's a, a it's a mystery. Them, line. A lot of them do, and a lot do now compared to five, six years ago. It's you'd think it would have cottoned on a long time ago, but it's still cottoning on. It's it's yeah. it's amazing. The power yeah, of the yeah, generic. Yeah. That that that's that's my. I, it's it's certainly changing, but that's also my experience in dealing with other companies that I know in the space and and other sort of members at the board level is that they don't actually really understand the value of a premium and particularly generic type domain name. 
It's like buying the best block of land in the best suburb in that country. It's yep. and there's only one. They're, they're not making any more Bitcoin.com.au domain. Yeah, and if you no, don't want to sell it, then you're that brand forever. I mean, it's so powerful. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, um, amazing stuff. So look, uh, your time is precious, uh, Dom. We're really, really happy to have you on the show. Unless there's anything else um, Rob's got to ask, I, I think we've covered the core stuff we wanted to talk about. We, um, we'd love to have you back on again in the future to see how things go with, um, with Independent Reserve and how they've gone with it and you know how you go with the other sales down the track. If you're happy to do that, we'd love to have you on for another Another quick chat. Absolutely. Absolutely. It'd be, it'd be fantastic. And um, go well, mate. Enjoy Amsterdam. Well, Netherlands. I keep saying Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy enjoy the Netherlands. And uh, well done, mate. And this is a round of applause for selling such a friggin' awesome domain name. And yeah. more of an applause for getting it in the first place. Yeah, um, absolutely. And we look forward to seeing what happens with it. Uh, in, in Australia. So, um, fantastic. Thanks, yeah, thanks everyone for, for tuning in. Today, Dominic, appreciate it. Yep. Anytime. Uh, Ed, Rob, you, thank you very much. No worries, mate. And if you haven't subscribed or liked or clicked on the, uh, you know, the, the buttons on YouTube and all the other things, do it. We'd love to have you uh, follow us on, on the show and, and tune in for the next ones. Bye for now. Thanks, Dom. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, guys. Thanks.